Hi there, Rebecca here with Lexa Create. Today I'm going to share with you a pouch that I designed. I called it a peekaboo pouch because it does have clear vinyl. It has these little partitions so you can kind of see which makes it easy if you use it for toiletry bags. You can use these bags for whatever you might want because they are fairly large. They finish up at around 13 inches by 8 inches. You can really mix and match the types of fabric. This one right here I used waterproof canvas. I had some laying around along with a clear vinyl and then the rest of it is some upcycled material from a wraparound skirt. I love the fabric and so I thought it would make a fun pouch. And then the other pouch I actually used cotton. It's 100% cotton all the way around. Now the clear vinyl that I'm using in these projects is a lighter vinyl. It's about a 12 to I would say 14 gauge vinyl and you want it thick enough to where it can withstand holding items um, but you don't want it so thick that you can't easily manipulate it with the fabric. For the interfacing I used SF 101 on this particular one to interface and beef up the cotton fabric so that it matched the thickness of the vinyl and then for this project since I was using the waterproof canvas I didn't use any interfacing on that obviously but I did use some this stuff called. I can't remember. It's a Pollen 807 Wonderweb interfacing and the neat thing about this is that you can sandwich it between two pieces of fabric and it will give you a good thickness. It's basically kind of glues the wrong sides of the fabric together so that you can see the right side of the fabric on both sides and so whatever interfacing that you have that you want to use where it has an adhesive adhesive on both sides um, would work and let's see I just used number five zipper tape you don't need a lot of fabric so that you can use upcycle material if you find some upcycle material that you really like See the binding on the inside and you can also decide which way you want your zipper to go it's individual preference however you want to place the zipper and where you want to add the the tab or if you even want to add one okay so let's take a look at the materials that you will need for the project you'll need a rotary cutter, mat and ruler, marking tool, some clips, and basic supplies like your scissors or fabric. I cut 15 inches in length and 9 inches in height. The fabric for the front, depending on what you want to use, this was waterproof canvas, but you'll need four strips that measure three inches by eight inches you'll need three of the clear vinyl and the vinyl you want to cut into strips that are two inches by eight inches you can use a bag label if you'd like and a d-ring this is a three-quarter inch d-ring and this is a number five zipper and the zipper I always like to use longer than I am going to require for the bag so I cut this one at 16 inches in length. Teflon foot is very useful when you are working with clear vinyl 
I'm actually using polyester thread for this project. It's just what I had on hand for the 807 Wonderweb interfacing. You'll need two strips of fabric measuring three inches in width by 15 inches in length. You're going to use them to sandwich the edges of the zipper on both sides. In preparation, you don't need to use any interfacing. You're just going to fold the edges towards the center and then uh, back together. For the binding, I repeated the same thing. You can use a narrower binding if you'd like, or I made binding of my own. It was about 32 inches for going all the way around. You can cut your fabric on the bias so that it will have more stretch to go around the curve, or you can buy your pre-made bias binding. So for this bag, I think I'm going to use the waterproof canvas again. Just take note that if you are going to use waterproof canvas, that you have two sides that look different. So you want to make sure that when you're sewing them with the vinyl between them, that you are going to sew them the right way. <laughs> facing up. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to work on the front panel. So grab your four pieces of vinyl that measure three inches by eight inches. And you're going to take your clear vinyl and you're going to set it on the top and clip it. I just have a mess here for you to see. That's probably not nice. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and attach my Teflon zipper foot. Grab your clips, clip down so that the vinyl doesn't shift. And for this project, I'm going to use a three millimeter stitch length, which is a little bit longer stitch length, but I'm, I'm using it because of the vinyl. I'll probably switch to a two and a half millimeter stitch length when I'm actually doing the assembly of the front and the back. Sew down at a scant quarter inch. I'm just gonna use the width of the Teflon zipper foot and back stitching beginning end to end. Open it up, press the seam away, and I'm going to top stitch it a little bit narrower because I want to make sure that I'm catching the back down. finger pressing it. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to line it up with the inside of the Teflon foot. That way I make sure that it's catching the seam on the other side and back stitch. starts to stick to your throat plate. I'm 
back stitch and then just trim your threads but that is the effect that you're going for and I'm going to repeat this stop until I've used up all four of the panels and all three of the vinyl panels so next grab your next piece of fabric and you just again want to make sure that you are placing it the right way around and you can clip it or you can just hold it in place if you think that it won't shift on you so I'm going to go ahead and trim the back and since this is nylon I could use a lighter but you want to be very careful because you'll melt the vinyl so you might have to think maybe I won't do that. So I'll repeat that process with the top stitching and I will meet you when it's time for the next step. Okay, so at this point, this is what you should have. You're going to need your iron. And I'm gonna fuse the back part of the bag. So you'll want right side down and then you're going to sandwich the interfacing in between. And again, I'm using the Wonder Web interfacing and then wrong side facing down. So you're making a sandwich with the interfacing in between with both right sides facing out. And follow the directions of your interfacing. Okay, so at this point your back piece is fused together. If you're going to put on a label, you can go ahead and put that on now. So I cut mine quite a bit more generous <laughs> than the back panel and that's because I like working with it longer. It makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just going to run a stitch back and forth just to hold it in place on both ends so that my zipper tab doesn't go flying off. Working on this part right here. You're going to grab a strip that is 3 inches by 15 inches. Let's first get to open a bit towards the center of this and I'm going to clip it. And I actually like to pull it out a little bit and maybe not press it all the way to the edge because I want to be able to keep this folded edge so it's not so bulky there so I'll put it in about halfway all the way across just measure make sure that you're consistent all the way across so whatever it is on this end you'll want to make sure it's the same on this end okay so next I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew all the way across back stitching at the beginning and end I'm going to go about one eighth of an inch in. Um, 
on this one, it was kind of a, not one eighth, this was more like a one quarter inch. And you just wanna make sure that you are catching all of the panels. The other thing you want to make sure is that your little binding is level in other words you don't want the back showing that way you just want to make sure that it's the same and again I'm using a three millimeter stitch length I'm going to actually just use the width of the presser foot because I'm pretty sure that that's going to catch both sides stitch length I'm going to back stitch the beginning and end Because this doesn't have interfacing, it may shift on you a bit, so just kind of do the best you can with it. And you're also dealing with something that doesn't have any give, yet the fabric is stretchy. My, my fabric is actually stretchy. Yours may not be as stretchy. too bad I can see a little bit right there but anyway you just do the best you can there okay so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the edge off that right next <laughs> now the double-sided tape so next I'm going to place binding. I'm going to just call it binding. But all the way across. There we go. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch again using the presser foot as a guide all the way across. Back stitching at the beginning and end. And this is why it's good to have the zipper longer because then your zipper head can be out of the way. Okay, so next we're going to work on this top bit. And this time I want to make sure that the binding is open towards the zipper. I'm going to repeat the process of putting double sided tape on the zip. And here you just want to make sure that you're trying to do it about the same distance from the zipper coil and you also want to make sure that it's sort of centered it's kind of hard because I don't want to get my head in there <laughs> but you get the idea I'm going to do this off camera I'm going to take it back to the sewing machine and again stitch Back stitch all the way across, um, back stitch, and then sew all the way across and back stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so now what I'm going to do is a bit of a French scene. So what I'm going to do is place the panel right sides down onto the back panel. And what I'm going to do is, if you can see, this is a raw edge. So there's several options here. You want to try to encase that raw edge because if not, you wind up doing what I did here. And you can see that it's a raw edge. So I had to put some fray, fray check or some glue on there. So I'm going to, in order to prevent that, I'm going to do a French seam and I'm going to place the back panel and the right panel right sides together and I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch all the way across and then I'm going to flip it and that way and then top stitch it and that way it'll be encased that raw edge. And don't worry about the edges not matching up nor the bottom because we're going to trim all of that up. Alright, I'm just going to take it to the sewing machine and sew all the way across. Again, an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and change back to my normal foot, which is a narrow foot. So that's just about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to do that. Because we're done with the Teflon foot. Pandemonium at my house. <laughs> now then, can take it and press it. Oh, didn't catch it there. I'm going to go again. Okay, Let's see if that worked. <laughs> Make sure I cut all the raw edges. It did. And now I'm going to press it. Okay, so here it is where it's fun in designing your own projects because once you learn a technique, then you can tweak it to how you want your project to turn out and look like. This is a perfect example of learning a technique and then just kind of adding your own twists to it. And you can make different versions as well. So super so super fun. Let me show you. Okay, so I just pressed it. You could top stitch it here, but again, it depends how you want it to lie. So if you want, you could put the zipper closer to the top or you could bring it down more and have this fold as a feature. So you could top stitch that if you'd like. So you can kind of play with it and decide what you'd like. And this is what it would look like if it was laying flat. This is kind of how it wants to lay. So it's all up to you as to the look that you're going for, really. At this point, if you're going to do the boxed edges, then at this point you would proceed like you're doing a normal box pouch. But I'm going to just make a nice a flat bag like this one. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to have it all flat. I'm going to put the zip in the middle. And I want to make sure that everything is squared. So I'm going to take the ruler and square all of this off. So I'm going to use the lines on the mat as well to kind of help me get this straight. And don't worry if this is a little bit twisted because I'm going to come in and round it off here in a minute. So you can play with a shape that you like. As you can see, this one's deeper. Okay, and then at this point, you want to also add the zipper tab if you're going to add one. So I've got a little D-ring that will fit on here just, um, just right. So that is like a half an inch D-ring and I made another little tab and the size of the tab just so that you know in case you want to make one is one and a half by four inches.
and pressed in half and in half again. So for the zipper tab, you want to go ahead and place it where you'd like it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch that on. Okay, so at this point, you're going to want to turn it inside out. Some clips and just clip everything down the side so it stays flat for you and doesn't shift. Then you're going to take something round and you're going to trace, trim the rounded corners. And I want to trim this up to a little bit, this edge. Okay, so now it's time to prepare the bias binding, well, or binding, whatever you have available. So you'll take your strip, and I've made this one two and a half inches in width. So you'll want to measure around the size of, of your bag and that will give you the length of the bias binding that you need. So I'm going to press it in half and then I'll press the raw edges in towards the center as I did earlier and then in half again. So you just want to make sure that you've got enough of the length to be able to fold over a little bit by a quarter of an inch at the top and then make sure that you have enough all the way around. I uh, made the bias binding as a true bias cut on the fabric in hopes that it would help going around the curve. It, I still had to get some pleats in there. So on this one, I just cut it on the straight of grain just because I wanted to maximize the use of the fabric. So all you're gonna do now is just go around and encase the edge of the bag in, and starting at the top and then clipping all the way around. It's going to get kind of bulky up here, so hang, hang with it, but, and take it slow when you sew over it. And you can make this narrower too if you want a narrower binding, but I think the narrower you go, the harder it is to catch everything. Especially if you're a beginner, <laughs> it can get tricky. So at the corner, you're just going to want to kind of take it and pinch it and make like a tidy pleat on both sides like that. You won't really be able to see it, so it doesn't matter, but just do the best you can. <laughs> Just bear in mind if you're buying a store-bought binding, you want to make sure that it kind of ties in because you will be able to see it a little bit through the bottom of the bag. And another thing I forgot to say is that if you are doing cotton and you're interfacing it with SF-101, the inside will be raw. So you may want to do some fray check or you may want to cut the strips a little bit wider and cut them with pinking shears. That way it doesn't unravel. Or you could like run a bead of the fray check. I'm just trying to share things that I've learned from making these, giving you some tips. You may figure out how to make it a different way and an even better way. <laughs> share it in the comments below if you do. We all appreciate it. In the sewing community. When you get to the zip you want to just make sure that the zip teeth are actually meeting so that the zip will close. And the other thing you want to do is open your zipper because that's how we're going to turn the bag. Okay so just trim off a little extra and then you're going to turn it in. Okay so the teeth are matching there and this is going to be open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, go very slowly over the thick parts, but I'm going to backstitch 
and so all the way around and I'm going to go probably about a quarter of an inch in I want to make sure that I'm catching both sides and so that is one of the benefits of having the wider binding is that there's more room for error especially if you are starting out sewing binding can be tricky so another thing you can do is you can put some um, clips up at the top just to keep everything in place and flat so you can make sure that the zips a good match there we go okay so off to the sewing machine at this point you could drop down the the uh, stitch length but I'm gonna leave it at three just because it's so thick in spots I'm going to back stitch over the teeth of the zipper as well. And you want to double check to make sure you're catching everything. Go very slowly over. Make sure that you don't have the D ring in the way like I did. <laughs> I felt something hard. So as you go along, you're gonna you can use like a flathead screwdriver or an awl or something to get your folds in and your fingers out of the way. And this whole time, I'm just watching the edge, making sure I'm keeping it at a quarter of an inch, taking a few stitches at a time, going around the corner and going slowly. get any puckers or folds don't fret because this is going to be on the inside okay I think I can breathe now I think I was holding my breath the whole time <laughs> okay let's see what we have okay so you want to <clears throat> you'll want to grab a turning tool of some sort I'm using my husband's file thing you can also use a hair dryer to soften the vinyl up if you need to. Holding the breath, holding the breath. <laughs> Hoping that it turns out. <laughs> you ever do that when you're making a bag and turning it? <laughs> I just noticed. Well, this is okay. I put the tab in on the wrong side. But that's okay because I can put some keys or something on there. <laughs> just go with the flow. So just when you're actually um, making the tab, just you can aud audition it and make sure that <laughs> it's going out. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you get to give it a try and drop in the comments below if you have any great suggestions or if you find a better way of making these little peekaboo bags. Now you can decide how many you want to make. Great gifts, toiletry bags, travel bags for your suitcase with a little clear window so you can see what's inside. Happy sewing!